Hi everyone. I wanted to talk to you about blending and mixing paint and uh, working wet in wet. Here I have one painting by Bartol, uh, who's a Russian painter. Notice how most of the shapes from sort of here to right back over through there are joined. They're all sort of unified together, but then just punctuated with a few little lights, darks, uh, warms and coals. There's sometimes a tendency to overblend with oil paint especially and then we can end up with a little bit of a either a muddy mess or a uh, painting that is just a little too soft edged. And one of the cures for that is to use, if, if this is happening uh, for you, is to use a fast drying medium and then allow the paint to tack off a little more uh, one of the number one concerns with oil paint, especially, is working wet into wet. And as we can see with this painting, it's got quite a few greys in this one. This is by Penley Boyd. Uh, but he's controlled it beautifully with the punctuation, with the darks. Uh, there's not a lot of colour. And it just shows that we don't have to use colour or put colour into a painting to make it powerful. Uh, it's good clean brushwork and a good control of light and dark especially through this area here it's kind of buildings and um, lots of stuff going on but it's still got those nice lights and edges on the brushwork to help as well so now we hop into a, a Richard Schmidt uh, and this is probably what I would sort of consider a fairly sort of colorful uh, painting from Richard and one of the paintings with a bit more light, natural light into it. Uh, but he's still employing greys in the distance, uh, which will then create beautiful depth and distance to the castle in the foreground. And he's used the colour in here. And also, once we do have control of the big areas, you can then see how you can then start to just blur a few edges and break a few edges. With oil painting, the magic normally starts to happen once the paint starts to go off and starts to tack. Here's a Robert Johnson painting, a New Zealand-born Australian painter who mostly lived and painted in New South Wales or the uh, areas of Sydney and out towards the west. And you can see he's really greyed off and uh, muddied up on purpose the distance. And the best way to really sort of see this is upside down. And you can see how he's just got that lovely gradation of colour, allowing more yellow, more red to come through. And that provides and creates a marvellous effect of depth and distance. I really do in, uh, enjoy looking at this painting and studying it because there's almost nothing going on in the very background. But then he just lets the shapes start to emerge. Uh, and this is probably a really marvellous example of how to create depth and distance in more of a vista, a scene that does have actually uh, quite a bit of distance. And I think one of the true keys is just how light the blue shadows and the shadows are. There's always a tendency to make them too dark. So that's another great lesson to learn. And here is a Tom Roberts, very low key uh, painting. Uh, I never actually noticed for many years that it was actually a little figure walking through there, but he's used the light and the dark, uh, and it's almost blended the whole bottom two thirds, except for that little bit of light here, uh, into one shape and almost losing uh, the light or any sense of light. So I'll just cover that bottom, and you can start to see still it holds together beautifully because it has such clear defined areas. So you can see from the figure, from the darks, a uh, little bit of warmth in here, that little bit of light going through there, but, and it just shows just how subtle we can paint. Oops, better get that one back, but still very powerful. And the main one is the sky, the light in the sky reflecting down into there over the bottom two thirds or almost 80%. And here's a just a classic Streeton, Arthur Streeton still life, but 
as this one is a little bit more muted with the colours, but then again, he still has enough separation of colour and edge to really create and generate uh, quite a powerful painting. And I think this, just to sum things up, this really brings it back to the power and the ability to apply paint, wet paint, uh, and uh, allow it to come off nice and clean and bright and clear and crisp, even if it is a fairly subdued scene. The one little trick that I think I've learnt to do is, say, when I'm, say, putting on, say, the, the red of this roof, I will deliberately make my mix a little lighter and a little warmer. Uh, I'm counteracting what may happen with wet in wet, especially when we're doing foliage. Uh, that's a, many of the times where we'll have quite a bit of underpainting. So when you're going to lay down some paint or lay, lay down some areas, if it is feeling a little wet and a little too wet, uh, a great trick is just to uh, adapt and add that little bit more uh, warmth and colour and brightness because it will tone down. It is a bit of a touch and feel, but I think definitely it's like planning ahead for what we um, are ultimately aiming to do. So it's a big, big subject, colour and brushwork and everything, but I thought this was just a nice little way to touch on a few areas of how to get those nice, clean and crisp um, uh, colours. And I think overall, when I am mixing colour for foregrounds, even this with it has a quite a, a warm but dull foreground as to one of these, I'm really working and playing with the paint a little bit more with shapes and values in the distance. But when it comes to the foreground and even the foreground with in a um, still life, I'm mixing the paint a lot carefuller uh, and especially where we do need those nice warm values because when we think this value here is just gr uh, the same grass that's in the distance, but of course the illusion uh, is that it'll get bluer and greyer as it goes and, and are lacking in yellow and then red. Uh, but I do tend to overcompensate knowing that uh, the paint will die off. But also the other point is that oil paint does dry a little lighter, unlike acrylic paint. So I'm counteracting with my darks, especially because uh, that's the one area that will really uh, start to show. So all the best. Talk to you next time. Bye for now. When it comes to art, there is no single right or wrong answer. However, there are still a lot of concepts and techniques that students need to learn to create a strong visual language. This course is designed to help you develop and find your own visual language so that you can start expressing yourself more confidently because over the years I've studied and noted the areas where students tend to struggle the most. And then I've delved deeply into these topics so we will cover the basics of colour, edge, how to achieve a strong contrast from light to dark, focal points and creating depth so that you can start to use it effectively in your work. I'll demonstrate a wide range of subjects which I believe will broaden your horizons and allow you to gain experiences that you may have only dreamed of trying. By the end of this course, you'll have a better understanding of how to express your own visual language and create artwork that is both successful and expressive. I invite you to join me for an exciting year of learning and exploration.